bears Hello bears Hello bears Oh, oh bears With no With no honey With no salmon In our fur you get it. Hi, everybody. I just uh, wanted to do a stream today. I normally don't do Sundays, but I believe I will probably be missing a couple days next week because I'm heading out to the Pacific Northwest to do Portland, Bellevue, uh, Richland with uh, the great Eric. Uh, I said the great. Rogan says the great. With the good Eric Nimmer. And um, looking at houses, hanging with Amy's family, it'll be a blast. So I will be missing at least a day or two, or not. I mean, I just did that conference in um, Omaha, and it went great. And much love to the, everyone who had me out, Zach, Joe. Great meeting some of the Bears were just incredible. I got to actually do a conference where I didn't have to be funny. I talked about theories of comedy, and, and there were laughs and stuff, but it was just... Uh, it felt good to not necessarily have to get a laugh. Um, and we got to just talk about, you know, cool stuff with a bunch of sweet libertarians. All right. So today, let's talk. Yeah, keep Tommy in your prayers. That's right. Tommy Robinson is facing some real hardship. And um, there's been some hardship today. I'll talk about something else a little later. So it's a sad story. But um, yeah, Tommy Robinson is in jail in England and uh, the English crown that the scariest part legally isn't that he got arrested for doing journalism. That that's crazy. I mean, come on. He was, he, he was getting more heat than the, than the pedophiles in, inside the courtroom. And his whole point was that he wasn't the mainstream media in England wasn't covering it. And he was, and he was on probation and they, uh, so they put him in jail to serve out the rest of his, his sentence. So I'm, I'm just trying to be as fair as possible and give the other side, the other, <clears throat> the other side, the side that I disagree with <clears throat> says that he was, uh, that the, the pedophile rape gang has a right to a fair trial and you don't want the public affecting the trial. And he potentially was doing that, which goes against some sort of law. And that means he broke probation and then he serves out. He wasn't, I watched the live stream well, parts of it and everybody else told me about it and um he wasn't even showing anyone's faces and he kept saying allegedly also media constantly does that do you think I'm, I, I, obviously what he was doing wasn't wrong what he was doing was heroic and it doesn't matter what you think about his politics or hey benny you want me to open the door guys give me give me five you got it oh and can you make some coffee love oh you're the best it doesn't matter what your politics are. This isn't an issue of left or right or up or down at all. Ah, George. Oh, you'll be cool, though. Hey, buddy. It's an issue of freedom. And it made me feel really... To look at it in, in, a, in the bright side, it made me feel great to be American. It made me feel uh, humbled, especially on Memorial Day. All the sacrifice that people have made to, to allow us to be here and uh, be free and have something to fight for. I think England doesn't really have much to fight for anymore. They're, they're, they're a crown weighing on the heads of the individual. So I wasn't even gonna talk about that, but someone in the chat said that. So now I'm gonna stay focused. Okay, first, I, I'm gonna make my case against Hollywood today. Cause I know I was on a bit of a rant this weekend and um, I got a lot of positive feedback from it. A lot of people saying, uh, thank God someone's saying this stuff. I got some confused people. I got some people saying that I've lost my mind and I'm way too angry now. And I don't do things for feedback. I mean, I do if, if, if it's the bears and you guys are just being honest with me and giving me like honest feedback and maybe you, you have my six and there's something I don't see. I got to let George out the door. Sorry, guys. Hey, George, I know you're not going to be happy in here. So why don't you go out there? And uh, that's a valuable thing, you know, the blind men and the elephant. Five blind men touch an elephant. They all have a different perspective on what an elephant is. And the blind men can either work together and figure out what an elephant is, or they can think that their perspective of truth is the only one and they stab each other to death. 
So if you're truly having my back and you see something that I don't, because all humans have blind spots, then I welcome your feedback tremendously. But I'm not motivated by approval. So people can say what they want. I know what's right and wrong in, in, in most situations. If, if you have constructive criticism, it's about something that I, I just may not see, which I do appreciate. Anyway, so I'm going to make my case against Hollywood right now. I, I, was, I didn't sleep much last night because I didn't get in until 2.30. I slept a bit on the plane, but I couldn't wait to see my family. And uh, so we got up early and uh, had breakfast and me and, me and Amy's just been glowing and Walter's just been so pumped and I just didn't want to sleep. I don't know what's going on with the dogs. Now they want to come in. I'm not going to deal with that right now. But um, so I made a video called My Case Against Hollywood and I wrote it all out. I read it. It was like a speech and I cut up all this stuff and I showed it to Amy and she said um, it was too intense. And this is a good thing about a, a trusting marriage or a trusting friendship or um, a trusting sibling or parent or just, just someone you trust, especially a marriage though, there's something special about it, is you, you realize they have your best interest. They have your family's best interest in mind when they, when they tell you something. So when she said that, I pushed back. I said, no, intense is good. I am intense. And she was like, I know, baby, but this is like... Um, I think you can do it better. Like this doesn't seem like, it seems like you're, you're yelling at people. And I was like, no, some, some things need to be said. Cause I will always push back. And she pushed back again. And then I was like, okay, I trust you. I'll do it again. Or I'll just talk naturally on a stream. And she was like, thank you for trusting me. Cause back in the day that wouldn't have happened. I would have been like, well, what's your angle on this? But she doesn't have an angle. Her angle is, is our family. So I, I'm, I think she might be right on that. Like, I, I see that. I might have been a little too intense. I, I was proving a case versus being just myself, I guess. So I'm going to just talk about it now. But first, I want to show you just an adorable video of my family. Because I, really um, I really enjoy showing you guys my family because I... I, I really want people to have families. I don't want them to be robbed of what I get to experience. And I, and I don't think our culture values family enough. I don't think our Hollywood values family enough. I'll obviously get to that. And I know so many people that would be such good parents and they would be able to see something that, that they otherwise would never get to see. It, it's almost like never getting to drive. And you see your friends from third grade and you're, you're 38 years old and they're still on their, their BMX bike and they're like, check out my sweet pegs I just got. I got new pegs and I got a new bell. And you're in a car and you're like, just get a car. And they're like, what? No, I have a golden set of pegs. And you're like, buddy, I'm telling you, get a car. It'll change your vibe. And it's like, you're too serious in your car. Like, why would you wear a seatbelt? All that would happen is you just fall down off your bike and you're like, no, there's higher stakes in a car, but it's just a whole different level of existence. And they're just like, whatevs, racist. So, and the amount of people that have written to me, like, thank you for sharing your family. I finally feel like me and my wife or me and my girlfriend that I want to make my wife, um, I can have kids and not become a pussy or not become like a guy that is broken or uh, my wife isn't going to change. I mean, they change, but it, it, it's not scary. It's beautiful. So here's just a quick video from yesterday. Amy sent me this one at Walter. And then today, Amy was trying on uh, a, dr a dress, being very pregnant. What do you think? Sour. It's sour. Where's the deer? Can you point to the deer? Yay, deer in our yard. Hi, deer. So tell me about your outfit, love. Well, I won it. Contest, <laughs> and it's supposed to be maternity wear. And it's like the most unflattering thing. Oh, you guys can't see where's it? Your, where's your jet plane? Uh, let, me, let me show you. Yeah, there we go. Let's start again. What do you think? Shower. 
It's sour. Where's the deer? Can you point to the deer? Yay, deer in our yard. Hi, deer. Yeah. So tell me about your outfit, love. This is hilarious. Oh, I won it. Contest. <laughs> and it's supposed to be maternity wear. And it's like, <laughs> Oh, uh, real quick, when my son sang Tuta, he has me play uh, tequila, the song, and I just swing him in the air, like, over and over and over again. And every time I feel like we're doing it too much, I just realize that at some point I'm not going to be able to throw him in the air, and I'm just I'm just soaking it in, man. It's So that's why he's at my legs right now going, Tuta, Tuta, that's how he says tequila. <laughs> and you listen, listen to it. Walter, what do you think of Mama's... Uh... Uh, onesie. Do you like it? Is it fun? What do you think, love? I think it'll look better on me when I'm not pregnant. Walk around. Let's see how noisy it is. <laughs> I lo love. It do you, looks do you, so much worse than I thought I was going to look at this. It's almost like a burka without any head coverings. I just, I almost look like, oh, I almost exposed myself. If I did this, like, I literally looks like I have no arms and I'm just... Love, what, what, do you, what do you look like? I literally look like Lena Dunham. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Oh my you look like Lena Dunham. <laughs> well, the main reasons I also want to show that is just that joke. Amy's hysterical. She's going to be the weather girl on uh, Unbearable News Network. It's going to be funny. All right, anyway, so let's talk about, oh, there's a super chat. Ian, why not Jokers in Richland? Awkward bear. I don't know what Jokers in Richland is. I've seen someone say that before. I thought you were talking about the Impractical Jokers. Uh, I don't know what Jokers is, but I'll meet up with those guys. I, I, comedy clubs are great, like, that are run well. I just uh, wanted to book a show, so I did. All right, anyway. Oh, and the bear phone has been activated. <laughs> Let's talk. Hollywood. I'm not going to be intense. I'm glad that Amy told me this and I can stream with the bears and just chat about it because I get pretty pissed and I try not to do jokes about things I hate because it just never comes off right. Like I even retired my Bernie Sanders as Bane joke because I, I, I think the audience can always tell I, I hate socialism. And uh, I can do things about uncomfortable topics or things that I'm kind of scared of or things that I'm frustrated with or things I, I think people are lying about. But I have such a hatred for socialism that I can't really make it charming. Like I'll do the, Bern like that Bain is, is a socialist. Bain is Bernie Sanders. And you know it's like, all your people are being oppressed. We will take from the 1% and give it to you, the people, dumb enough, you know. And But the more I would do the joke, I'd be like, you morons! How can you believe this? This is starvation. Like, I, I couldn't control it. And that's why roasts are only good if the person making fun of the roastee doesn't hate the person. That's why the Dean Martin roasts, they could be brutal to each other, but there was always an element of respect. And I just have no respect for socialism at all. That's why I can, I can rip on women so effectively in and, and relationship jokes because... Women instinctively can tell I don't have resentment or hatred towards them. So I get to just really unleash. And I don't trust myself mocking socialism right now because it just gets too dark. All right. So anyway, um, it all started with Alan Cummings posted this thing with him and Harvey Weinstein. And he wrote this thing about how enough is enough and he even witnessed some of the horrors that Harvey did. And, and, but now it's time to, to stand up to other, you know, horrors and men. And, and it's about Donald Trump is the worst. And, and by the end, he was just ranting about Donald Trump for real. And it bothered me deeply because this, this human being is standing with a guy he knows is a serial rapist. And this guy is, um, Making him rich beyond your wildest com comprehension. Like Harvey Weinstein is making Alan Cummings a wealthy man. And he's just standing there grinning, knowing what the monster is. And then he has the audacity when Harvey's going to jail and he's probably worried that he's going to rat out Alan about something. You know, Harvey's probably got some stories to tell. 
And uh, he's, he's in Tommy Robinson's shoes. He might get off in prison. <laughs> but, uh, but instead of just taking it like a man on some level, however this guy could be a man, but he made it about him being a victim again and how it's Trump's fault. And I just, it was bothering me. I'm like, how do you make that Trump's fault? And it's like, well, grab him by the pussy. I'm like, Harvey Weinstein is has raped allegedly 80 women at this point, which means it's probably in the thousands. And and it, how do you compare that to a comment in a van with Billy Bush? And I'm a guy who used to cringe a bit at some of the ways that Trump would handle himself. To be honest, I never mock it anymore because the other the other way of I'm not talking politics right now because as a comedian, not as a, a father, a husband, a man, a citizen, as a comedian, I stopped mocking Trump because it was so hyperbolically being portrayed in the media that there was nothing there. There was no mining of it. It's it's like doing a Catholic priest joke now. It's It's been beaten just to death. Like now, there's just no excitement in that. Because there's nothing there. And so this guy is just going to revert back to that. And so I started thinking. It only matters. Oh, and another thing is all the women writing, like tens of thousands, many celebrities, all the likes, you know, women that I know, that I respect, are like, thank you, Alan, for standing up. It's like standing up. It only matters when you stand up before the person's been humiliated, before his best friends are doing jokes about him being raped in prison. Like, here's a comment I just saw uh, on my YouTube notifications while I was looking for stuff to use. Like, someone just wrote this. Uh, it was on a video from back in the day. It said, Owen saw the rapist and Aziz before it was public knowledge. I was talking about that for literally years. I talked about the Louis C.K. thing on a Patreon episode a year ago. I talked about just, I mean... I, I openly would talk about predators in Hollywood and I would be chastised for it. And they would say that I was the bad person. And now that it's public knowledge, no one ever goes back and thanks you or says like, oh, way to go. Um, they don't they don't say they don't uh, praise the uh, the person who warns them. You know, the guy the, you shoot the messenger, but not the bears. I'm not complaining. My life is sweet. I found a bunch of people that love the messenger and you yourselves are a bunch of messengers. It's just the difference between people seeking truth and people seeking power. Okay, I'll get to that. So I put together a little uh, montage video here for the thing I, I did this morning that I didn't end up using. But uh, here is just the amount of people accused in Hollywood of like of rape or assault. And I'm not including the ones that are that sound pretty nonsensy. You know, like the Prairie Home Companion guy and some of that other stuff. Even David Blaine's. Some chick accused him of rape, but then she was like, I couldn't even go to my audition the next day without crying. I'm like, I'm, I'm not the one to think that every accusation is, is legit, but you can sense based on reputation and based on the number of women and, and what they say and how they say it and uh, just to kind of figure out what's going on, especially are they like hammering Trump all the time? That means someone has something on him. But so anyway, let's uh, let's check out this little montage. Yeah, I added this song to make it a little less intense. Because Amy said it was intense. So I, in case you guys want to watch it again. By the way, that's just the guy who wrote, yeah, I could eat sacks or whatever. Let's watch it again. Okay. And so now you're thinking, well, um... Owen seems to be hammering the men and men are, are being attacked in a lot of ways by the court system, by, you know, the welfare state, by all this stuff. No, I just say, I call it how I see it. Like here's, here's one that I think is ridiculous going the other direction. Whitney Cummings, 
posted this. It says it's a it's a man that, that has a shirt on. It says women are sacred, and it said now this is a fire first date look. Tag a sexy man, sexy man who would wear this. A female friend of mine sent this to me, just rolling her eyes, like, "Will you please mock this?" Women are not sacred. They're scared of this guy because hunters dress like the wilderness around them. They don't dress like a, a hunter. They dress like the woods. You know, military dresses like the environment that they're fighting in. They don't dress like uh, a big soldier. Well, the British did. They used to wear big red coats, and that's why we beat their ass, and that's why we don't send our journalists to prison. Even when CNN reported for like a month that Donald Trump paid a bunch of whores to pee on him, which there was no proof whatsoever, he didn't send them to prison, and he didn't make them stop reporting. Now, England won't let people report that Tommy Robinson went to prison. That, I mean, and for those of you that are like, oh, what are you, where's your, where's your proof, Big Bear? Hey, Big Bear, what's your proof? Well, here's the exact, uh, the exact order. Ah, oh, do I have it? I might not have sent it to myself. That's all right. I'm not going to go too crazy with it. I'm just, just trust me. It's a, it's a, it's an order from the crown. It's, it's, it's unprecedented. It's a suppression of speech, just straight up. And it's, it's about a grooming gang. A woman uh, sent me a, a Facebook message, I think, or a post. She's a bear. I, I recognize her about how she was groomed as a child by uh, a, a predator. And because I didn't know what grooming technically was, I, I've heard the term, but it's some real horrifying stuff, guys. And Tommy was trying to call out predators, snakes in his garden. And that's when politics no longer matters. Left, right, up, down, does not matter. We as men have to call out predators. So this guy, uh, this guy, female worship is a red flag, ladies and men. If you see a man that's like, women are everything. They are the sacred and, and they are, we just should bow. I did a video once called Women Are Awesome because in general, I like the female vibe. I think it can be really twisted by feminism and by the state and by media and by all kinds of stuff. And you can bring out a pretty dark side of female tyranny in a woman, just like you can bring out a dark side of male tyranny. You know, check out some of these experiments they've done on men with um, following orders and whatnot. So none of our hands are clean in the in the big picture. But um, that's why I can do female jokes and rip into women, because women can naturally tell I don't hate them, but I kind of see them for what they are. But if dudes worship, run, uh, run. Because if not, if you do not run, what might you uh, see? I don't know. Maybe some of these guys. And also, you know, worshiping your woman is one way to put it, but it isn't worship. It's not worship. I die for my wife. I am obsessed with her. I love her. She's just, she's my everything, but I don't worship her. I wouldn't get on my knees and, and beg from her or like treat her like some sort of idol. That women don't want that. That's weird. They, you know, give them your everything, but that's not worship. Anyway, let's stay focused. All right. And I also thought this is a good time to uh, show you guys the difference between a hilarious mockery of me, like saying, like taking a dig at the bear that's funny, and then one that's um, really scary and creepy. And I get both of them a lot. Like a lot of you guys are, are insanely funny, and I like being made fun of. Because I miss male camaraderie and a lot of parts of society are really missing male camaraderie these days where, you know, the what would you do is or would you rather is that men just do, you know, what would you do if you woke up and you had nine dicks on your forehead? Well, do they nine big dicks or mini dicks? Uh, five normal, four mini. Well, they get boners at the same thing. Uh, four the minis are into, but you have one gay dick. What do you do? You can't cut it off. That's a hate crime, right? So these are the conversations men have. We also mock each other, but it's hilarious. 
So here is a hilarious mockery of me that made me laugh out loud. Uh, is from my recent Kendrick Lamar meets Amway soundtrack. A guy named Isaac says, "You have the dumbest haircut for a grown man." That's hysterical. Okay, this is a scary comment. Hey man, are you drunk? Sometimes, and I'm not even going to show the person because there's just I hate bringing attention to crazy people. But I I need you to see what I get these more often than you can imagine. Sometimes they're way crazier, but. Men can be emotional nut jobs too. It's not just women. Men can be these like twisted, needy, weird, angry, bipolar guys. Okay, so this is about a joke I'm about to show you too. That's, <laughs> hey man, are you drunk? Sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Don't be racist, man, please. You're letting them win by your angry actions. As a fan who is worried about you, please check yourself, man. I didn't re respond. I don't even think I saw it. And then he wrote, fuck, man, I'm confused. Thank you for humiliating me. And then I swear to everything sacred in me, you will remember those comments. Because I responded to him on, on Instagram, but it was just like, your mom sucks, strangers. You know, like what I normally do, I, I diffuse people calling me racist by just saying nonsense. And then he wrote, us rednecks in Arizona conceal and carry 24-7. So I just wrote, you're now threatening to shoot me? And then the conversation continued where he was like, oh man, I, I'm really a fan though. I'm glad you responded. But, and so then I just kept continuing on my day and then I let, went back and 30 comments later, he's like, no, I have guns. And I'm like, dude, I'll report this to the FBI if you continue. I, I, I never do, but I just threaten it. I will. I probably, I'm not going to say I never do. I will if I, if I really feel like it. All right. So hopefully that helps you understand. This is a hilarious comment. You have the dumbest haircut for a grown man. And this is a wicked scary comment. And and I, I'm not going to disengage from bears and becoming friends with you guys and hanging with you guys and stuff because 99% are ridiculously cool. Like dudes I met in Omaha this weekend that drove, drove from places like we had some unbelievable conversations. And I wouldn't give that up for anything. Same with bear phone. You know, but every now and then when you see a ton of comments and then things turn dark, where it's like, why aren't you responding? Do you hate me? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with you? You, you're nothing. You're nothing. You don't, you think you're something, but it's just, zzz. and it's like, oh, I'll, I'll fuck your whole family. I'm dead serious. And I come in after 30 comments and I'm just like, what? Fortunately, bare phone just had maybe one dude trying to get in my head on it. But overall, bear phone's awesome because trolls don't pay. But just, just a little peek into my life. This was the joke. It was uh, reparations happy hour invites white people to pay for drinks. And so my joke was, we already do that. It's called reparations. And then I continued the joke to, to turn it into kind of a rant that kind of started turning on white people where I'm like, yeah, but by the way, if you're white and you participate in this, like, you're way worse than, than you're the worst of anybody. And then I'm like, man, if I was black, I'd make white people pay for my drinks. I'd probably just start beating these cucks up. You know, I've just, I just made it funny. So that's what the guy was responding to. Like, that's what I'm, I'm giving the cause a bad name. I'm so easy to attack. Why do you make it so easy, Big Bear? You say these quotes and then people can just crush you and then it hurts me and everyone. No, I'm a comedian and I've always done these jokes. These are jokes. People put their own shit into art. And I interact with people, so I get to see this a lot, and I get to really get to know people, and comedy is such a, a minefield now that I refuse to kneel in. I refuse to follow the rules. I refuse to not say the words that people tell me not to say because I know I am not a racist. That's why I'm not making fun of socialism anymore because I don't trust myself to just fly off the handle if I have too many bourbons and I'm on stage making fun of Bernie Sanders. I might just start yelling. But I have no animosity towards black people. I have animosity towards things like reparation day. That's crazy. Just like my joke about the sombrero and the yarmulke for um, cultural appropriation. I do this long joke about whether or not I should be able to wear a sombrero during Halloween. It's a long joke, but the basic gist is if anyone needs a sombrero, it's the whites because the sun's not our amigo. We need the protection. But the whitest, pastiest people on the planet, the Jews, have the smallest hats. It's called a yarmulke. It barely covers their bald spot. They get at 25 from stress. So I propose Mexicans and Jews switch hats, and that's how we cure skin cancer. Ah, 
Because that's about a, a dangerous topic, but it's silly. And just like this, the thing about welfare is silly. We already do. It's called welfare. If you see the world as individuals and not races, you don't take offense to that unless you're scamming people on welfare. Because uh, then me and Nimmer had a great talk about that. See, this is, this is why I know dialogue is still okay in America. I think, one, it's an issue of intelligence. Nimmer's a, an intelligent guy. He's a very, very smart, opinionated, worldly, good-hearted man who's done a lot with his life. We differ on a lot of opinions. He's super black from the South. I'm super white from the North. And sometimes we get into it. But it's hilarious. And then we come up with a joke. Like like Nimmer um, commented like, I like where that turned out, but your original premise is flawed. And I wrote, how so? And then we just switched to text and started discussing. Because it's not about virtue signaling or showing everybody what we are that isn't real. So we start talking about it. And he's like, well... There's more whites on welfare. And I'm like, that is true. But there's more percentage of blacks on welfare in the black population, than the white population. And then we started debating. But the gross amount of welfare comes from the whites. But I'm like, but bigger percentage of the blacks. And he's like, well, and then we're debating. And then I go, I really hope you hold this same opinion with uh, police shootings. Because the majority of police shootings are white people. But... Uh, black people are shot more likely than white people. So you can't have both. And this is when we start really debating. Because I'm like, if you think of it as gross, not net, if you think of it as like how many total dollars in welfare, then you also have to think how many total shootings, which whites have more, unarmed whites are shot more than the, by the cops. By the way, much love to the cops. Uh, although you guys can be dicks, I think you've gotten way too harsh of a run on this thing. And there's a lot of people out there uh, rooting for you guys and we don't think you're a bunch of racist psychos we see through the bullshit just trust us but if you're going to straight numbers the whites get shot way more than the, than the blacks but the blacks are disproportionately shot and then you know we started discussing and he was like well you know the black population's been through a lot I'm like well I'm a quarter Jew that's why I'm a little sneaky sometimes and then I was like think about the difference between a genocide like the Armenians have faced and many other groups that aren't acknowledged by a lot of people um, I'm like it's way more of an insult that they didn't even let us pick cotton. You know, you guys at least had a value. You just had a bad work deal. You know, they're like, you're going to pick some cotton. What do we get paid? Nothing. And we're going to be real dicks. I'm like, the Jews were like, oh, can we pick any cotton? They're like, you guys can't pick cotton. Why don't you go ahead and take a shower and tap out? You know, I think that a genocide is way more insulting than slavery. Because I didn't even want to get in the whole back and forth about like, um, you know, that there were Irish slaves and what Slavs were and all that. Like, I'm not going to get into that. But if we're going to talk about generational PTSD, you know, in the 1940s, the Jews were uh, not even allowed to pick cotton. They were uh, told to scrub, scrub down the showers and they didn't walk out. And granted, I'm only a quarter. Uh, and it is a very sneaky quarter. But uh, at that point, I can be like, so what are we really talking about here? And any group can say that. You know, the, the Irish can say that about the English. where They were intentionally starved. They were intentionally starved by the English. During the potato famine, the English were pulling ships of potatoes out of there. So what do they say? Like every time I walk by a cafeteria with potatoes, I start shaking and commit crimes? No. So that's my position. His, he kept his position a little bit. I kept mine a little bit. We laughed about it. And then we moved on to writing jokes because that's what men do with IQs above four. Um, so just FYI, guys that do stuff like this and tell me... Um, by the way, the irony of this is he's telling me that I give uh, our people a bad name as being actual racist. How about the fact that he says us rednecks in Arizona can steal and carry 24-7? I'm a strong advocate of the Second Amendment, and I think that's a way worse representation of gun owners. Gun owners are not looking to shoot people. They're looking to defend their family and themselves, and it's not even to fight the government. It's when the government collapses and anarchy breaks out. And people come to take your shit, you know, because that that whole I know I'm getting sidetracked. I'll get back to Hollywood in a second. But I know that, um, you know, the government argument can be like, do you, do you really think you can take a tank and a drone? A, a lot of Americans will be operating those who will not go against other Americans. And B, a major reason to own guns is not if but when the government fails. 21 trillion and, and going up exponentially. <laughs> when the government fails, the threat isn't the government. They fail. The threat is um, 
people you don't know outside your community, people that want to rob you with no rule of law, you know, Katrina style. And you have a right to defend yourself and you always will. The government cannot get that contract. They can't have a monopoly on personal protection. They already do a bad job. Talk to black people, apparently, uh, of protecting people. So how can you then argue that they have a monopoly on protecting your family if not, not if, when they can no longer protect us. All right. So that's all that was. And I saw this. Someone sent me this. The person swore it's true. Uh, it's so insane. I do believe it, but it's just beyond. It said, me and my dad at the So Sorry event today, we are sorry about what our evil race has done to the blacks. We didn't choose to be white, and it's something that haunts us every day. And it's it's a, a father and a son wearing a, like a yoke. And when I first saw this in chains, when I first saw this, I completely believed this. Because I've seen whites do even more embarrassing things than this. And they have the So Sorry shirts. And this is just textbook white people, 2018. So, you know, I posted it with a joke about like, uh, I can think of better father-son events. But part of me, I, I th I'm 10% thinking it's a joke just because they said to the blacks. And uh, it's just too funny. I don't know. No, I. a lot of people told me it's real. A lot of people that I believe and the person, because I get these all day. I get them all the time and I've been tricked before. But, um, you know, that one is just crazy. So let's get back to Hollywood. So Alan Cummings, Alan, one, the thing about Hollywood is once you start pulling a thread, oh, and by the way, you can totally super chat me and I'll read them all at the end. So that's totally on the table. Sorry for not uh, responding. I just want to stay focused and then I'll answer the bear phone as well. Or um, paypal.me slash feed the bear if you want to just go that route. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, if you start pulling a thread, if you start pulling a thread, it all falls apart. Like this guy, Alan Cummings, He's clearly up to some shit. And then you start looking, and I made this meme. He was in a Brian Singer movie, who's a known pedophile, and show dogs. And he and he's also, you know, the Satan's Trinity, which is a vegan atheist and friends with Brian Singer. You could fill in the third one. I just think Satan's Trinity is a funny one. Like, I can be boys with uh, vegans. I can be boys with atheists. I can be boys with someone who's worked with Brian Singer. But if you're a vegan atheist who's worked with Brian Singer, that's called Satan's Trinity. And you're for sure. You know, uh, Thomas Sowell talks about that in his new book a lot. Like when, when several factors line up is when things start becoming virtually factual. And I'm not saying this guy is a rapist or a pedophile or something, but he's the flags are blaring about this dude because uh, Show Dogs was just pulled for for grooming scenes. Like they were, they, they were showing um, the, the massaging of genitals by the main characters, which are dogs, you know, talking dogs and uh, which children relate to. And they were, they were having their genitals rubbed by strangers. And the joke was go to your happy place and let it happen. And a lot of parents freaked out about it, but look at how it's covered by CBS. And bear in mind, this isn't um, salon.com. This is CBS Los Angeles. Family movie show dogs pulled from theaters to snip inappropriate inspection scenes. When you put something in quotes, that means it's alleged or it's questionable or you're being sarcastic. The quote should be around family movie. Family movie show dogs pulled from theaters to snip inappropriate, not in quotes, um, genitalia touching. I, I, maybe they say inspection scenes for for censorship for uh, to fit some code or something. I'm not going to judge that, but where they put the quotes is beyond weird. And, uh, just the fact that show dogs was made and no one questioned it in Hollywood. is just a glimpse into the world of Hollywood where they don't have, they need consultants of non pedophiles to tell them. It's kind of like on LA, LAPD or NYPD blue. They would have real cops be like, Hey, Hey boys, the real way you do this is, is first you'd have them put their hands Blah, blah, blah. And the, the writers would be like, oh, so that's real procedure. And they're like, oh, in this situation. So I think the writers for children's 
TV and movies need a non-pedophile. So just drive two hours in any direction around LA and just get anybody and just ask them like, okay, how do I make this not sound like I'm trying to have sex with a child? And they'd go, well, any parent that isn't insane would find that real weird. And then, you know, a pedophile would then re retort and say, but it's, it's, it's funny humor for the, for the parents. And they go, no, 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 no. Um, there's a lot of joke premises that don't involve genitalia rubbing compliance humor by a stranger about a main character that your child is relating to in a movie for kids. Now, if it's a comedy for adults, fine. If there's a prostate exam and someone's like, take it, like hilarious, we're talking about adults. That's a kid's movie. It's a movie for kids. You don't do genitalia rubbing. So, and this is a point I was just making with my dad. I've been, I've been getting tighter with my dad lately. It's been really good, actually. We've been understanding each other lately more. And, um, he, well, one, he doesn't quite understand my career. He thinks that I should somehow figure out how to get back in the career that he saw. Like, how do you get an agent? How do you get back in with, with your, with the movies and the TV? And I'm like, dad, you got to understand that's all done and they don't even know it yet. Like it's diseased. It's not comedy. It's not art. It's, it's, it's abusive. It's like, um, and you know, I think that we're ahead of the game on this one. I think that it's like people that saw the fall of Blockbuster coming with Netflix, you know, and I'm good at pattern recognition and I'm also moral. You know, me and my dad had a lot of arguments about the morality of, of some of my career decisions and he's a moral person, but he was talking about how I just don't work with certain people and then I can be myself, but I, I don't say everything publicly and all that. I'm like, dad, there is no winning once it's, it's a dead organism and Hollywood's done. And this is my case against Hollywood. This is, this is what I, the, the, what I did this morning that I'm just going to try and talk through now because Amy was right. It is way too intense. Like this is real. Like Harvey Weinstein, the biggest producer in Hollywood is a serial rapist standing next to a very questionable man who was in a movie directed by a known pedophile who still works. And he was also just in a movie that got pulled from theaters because it had pedophilia grooming scenes. That's just in one day in Hollywood. And it's constant. Even Morgan Freeman now has like reputable allegations against him for being um, an absolute pervert. And here's the thing. When I was in Hollywood, and this is why I like to talk to young people and try to show family stuff and try to show stuff. Because I'm, I'm trying to talk to myself when I'm younger too. You know, if I was, if I pulled the psychology on myself, I would say I'm trying to reach out to a younger me that I'm trying to protect that no one was protecting at the time. And show like, you're going to be okay. Be a good dude. Because there was a time when I didn't think I was ever going to get a family. I was a touring comedian. I lived an excessive lifestyle. I dated a lot of women. Everyone I knew was getting divorced. It was ruining their families. I figured the creative people always got divorced. They just always got divorced. I, I was like, I'm cursed. And then I fell in love with Amy. We got married. We said vows in front of our, our family. We had a child. And guess what? It's not hard at all to be faithful. I, I truly thought I was going to battle it for life. Uh, I, I really did. And I'm just being honest. This isn't something I enjoy admitting. This sounds weak and weird. But I truly thought that I was always going to have to fight it. Because after shows sometimes, you know, when I was in my 20s and I just performed in a theater and I just closed with Coldplay and you just have all these beautiful women just being like, you're tall. Let me touch your pants. And, um, and you're like, wow, what's going to beat that? I mean, all these guys, they don't even like, they're always complaining that they don't get women. I just get as many as I want. Like, this is, pr I'm so lucky. Although I, I always was pining for it. That's what bonded me and Adam Sandler. It was my joke where I'm like, I did it early on too. I always pined for it. I always knew, I always was a family guy. I just thought I was cursed. I, I said, um, I'm one of those guys, uh, like after a one night stand, a girl could be like, well, what do you want to do for breakfast? And I'm like, what do you want to do for Christmas? 
do you have any like young cousins or something that I could teach the piano? You know, because it's not complete unless I teach somebody. Like I always was like that. And so, um, and I was in a world where that didn't exist. So I just kind of adapted. And then once me and Amy really started cooking, you know, the beginning was turbulent. It's in the book. I was working on that a lot this week. That should, that, that should be out soon. I, I got, I will get that really going soon because frankly, I could use the cash. That 20K really did hurt. Uh, I mean, I don't need the cash, but I want to start selling that book and it's a phenomenal book, but the beginning was super turbulent. I'm not going to lie. We faced a lot of stuff. A lot of couples face the jealousies, the fighting, the unnecessary, crazy, the, uh, lack of trust, the nonsense. We don't at all anymore. And that's bottom of the heart. I mean, it's not even close. It's like. When you see what sex and love and intimacy and friendship and being close to a woman, not the first five minutes of a CGI movie over and over again, not that, that's nothing. That's, that's sugar. That's like eating. And I'm not, you guys know, I'm not virtue signaling to women. I'll burn things to the, like, that's not my personality. I, I truly want people to know this because I don't think our society functions when, when this knowledge isn't being transferred. It's like you will live in a nothing treadmill. It's like eating pixie sticks and never having steak. It, it, you just can't, it's like riding a bike and never being in a car. Like you can't imagine it. And now the thought of me being with another woman, and don't get me wrong, I'm a man, I have, I have lusts and, and random boners and stuff. I'm not saying that I'm this like pure angel. But like the thought of being with another woman is so alien to me at this point that it's like beyond. And you don't start being a man until you're that. I'm convinced of that. That's why I see a lot of these men are, are, are so pathetic and why I'm so quick to mock them. Because even if they're alleged, you know, and you don't know if like when he was whacking off in front of the stewardess and then had sex with the two models, if it was totally consensual. But, you know, he's married with kids and everything. I'm like... Fuck them. And I'm no prude. I'm no prude. I am not a prude guy. I am not a judgy guy. But like, fuck those guys. Which guys? I don't know. Let's take another look. Hang on one second. And guys, I'm not trying to be holier than thou. You know, I fight desires to just whack off to porn for an afternoon, just look at weird shit, just get boners. Uh, I get it. Like, I'm not saying that. It's not about um, being above my animal self. It's like, it's nonsense to think about, like, lifting up a chick's skirt and, and talking to her about her vagina, like, on a set of a movie or something, or, like, having an affair or like being intimate with another woman. It's like once you hit that level, it's not on the table. And maybe, you know, who knows? I My brother's good at this. My brother's good at reminding me that I don't know. <laughs> you know, my brother's good at that. Like he's like, you don't know what it's like in 20 years. You don't know what it's like if, if, if she stops looking at you. You don't know if it's like if, uh, you know, you moved to France for four years and, uh, she never taught, but I see, I don't think like that. I just see the, I just see it and I'm like, this is it. But he sees it like, you just don't know what other people are going through. You don't, you haven't walked a mile in other people's shoes, but I just, I see no value in it. I see it as such pathetic escapist bullshit. And I don't think you're a man unless you commit to one woman. I just don't. I think it's pathetic not to. I think like I, I look down at that. Just, I'm being honest. Like, I look down at that. I look at that and I'm like, wow, what, what are you hiding? Like, what, what is it that you can't, what is it that you can't get through? You know, like, should I trust you? It's so funny. All right, anyway, let's continue. Because look at what happens to their kids. And it's like all of them. And they're all divorced. Hollywood is just 
I did another one of those uh, Benny Hill things to divorce, but it's a little mean. I, you know, I don't want to just rub it in. People go through a lot of stuff, but it's they're all divorced like several times. And one that hit me hard was uh, the Chris Pratt divorce with Anna Ferris because I'm friends with them. I did um, House Bunny with Anna. I, me and Chris Pratt used to like text a lot. Like we we're like boys. He's a great dude, hunter, normal guy, hilarious guy, man's man. Uh, and so when they got divorced, that one hit me because they were great together. And uh, they had a kid and they're, there's something about that town, man. There's something about that disease because Anna's awesome. Chris Pratt is a straight shooting legend. And what the fuck? And then you just start looking through all of them. It's like, look at this dude. My, Michael Jackson was on my wall when I was a kid. He was on my wall. He was bigger than life. He was, he was, a. Uh, oh, no way. Thank you, love. He was walking on the moon. He was doing the moonwalk. Thank you, my love, my love. Oh, uh, Benny's out. He was scratching. He was having bipolar issues. All right. He wanted in, he wanted out. He didn't know who the hell he was. Oh, he's right here now. Yeah, he wants in now. Is that okay? Oh, yeah, it's just hot. It's awesome. <clears throat> so, Michael Jackson's the biggest star in the world. King of pop. He's a star. And a lot of people don't realize the archetype, like we're bears. The archetype of star is what, it, it's godly. It's, it's, a, it's a false god. It's, it's you look up at the stars. Like the stars are uh, what you worship. You know, the stars are untouchable, uh, just stars. And they're not. You know, Michael Jackson, when I had him on my wall, was a young, talented black man. And then he became um, a white woman. And um, who only wanted to sleep with children. And then he killed himself with drugs. That It can't end worse. It can't end worse than someone just digging into their face and changing their face and becoming a white person and a woman and not being able to be with anybody. And I'm not even alleging that he's a pedophile. I'm alleging that he couldn't relate to adults. I don't think he was sexual. He may have been. He may not have been. I'm not saying he wasn't. But he doesn't strike me as, um, as these guys. Those guys are snakes, right? I'm not, I'm not saying for sure about Alan. Oh, you know, gut, gut by him. But as much as the evidence looked like he was a, a pedophile, I think he just related to children. I think that he was like, let's play. Hey, everybody, look. I just learned a new word today. <laughs> he, was, he was definitely inappropriate. He definitely touched weird because kids touch weird. Kids hu hug and wrestle and, and a grown man should not be wrestling around with someone else's kid in their bed. So I get why people thought he was a creep. I just don't think it was about it like his wiener. But he, it couldn't have ended worse. And he's the biggest. You know, look at, look at uh, Elvis. Elvis, love Elvis. On top of the world. On top of the world went from nothing to everything. Every woman wanted him. How did he die? He died. He became like a bloated, just in a onesie, just a bedazzled onesie, just her, like a heroin addict, barely, which is mutton chops. He died on the toilet of exhaustion. He couldn't even shit. He died too exhausted to shit wearing a onesie covered in bedazzles. When I say there's nothing on that hedonic treadmill, I am not saying that to like virtue signal. There's so much virtue signaling that I know I sound defensive with that, but I really want it to hit home because I really think I can, I can get to people because I, I have credits. I had social clout there. So I'm not just some guy on the outside saying like, look at them and they're, and they're like, well, you just wish you were them. They still try and do that to me. And I'm like, I had a $60,000 book deal with the biggest, most prestigious publisher that everybody wants to be in. And I basically gave it up because I wouldn't not talk about certain things after leaving the city and having another development deal after I left. Like, what about this isn't adding up? I was still at CAA. Like, none of the facts line up. But people just, once they're in a cult... Which one? Oh, our, and then what happens to their kids? Like, okay, like R. Kelly. Like, these are these are articles about these famous people's um, children, and 
again, I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. I'm not trying to make any stances, but like, I've never met a trans children. In fact, I think it's, uh, I don't think it's insane. It's not real. We all have different qualities about us. When I was five, I played piano all day and I liked to weave. I also liked trucks and to play rough and throw rocks. I also uh, would cry sometimes because I miss my mommy. Even when I was 12, 13, I still played violin. Even today, like sometimes I find myself asking Amy if she wants me to make her something nice in the kitchen while she's working with power tools. Like we are all, and it's not a gender spectrum. I'm all male. She's all female. Everybody is just a complex organism and male, female doesn't divide everything like it, people think it does. This whole trans child thing is just horrible parenting. Like R. Kelly. And this is, okay, the, and this is like a, a thing to make him sound awesome. The former Jack Kelly, 14, told In Touch Weekly that she knew this is a, a boy. That she knew that she was a boy, or no, I don't know what the fuck this is. All right. That she knew she was a boy trapped inside a girl's body. I'm already confused. When, when she was as young as six or seven, she knew she was a boy. And while the mother and siblings have reportedly supported Jay's sexual orientation, her famous father, R&B heavyweight, definitely doesn't. But do you think that they're really someone trapped in their body? Or do you think it's because their father ran a sex cult and used to urinate on strange women while he was married to their mommy? Like, what? <laughs> like, you think it might be because that child is living in, in horror? Okay, like um, Angelina Jolie and uh, Brad Pitt. Jolie's five-year-old daughter, Shiloh Pitt, thinks she's a boy and encourages her to embrace all the testosterone-fueled behavior from cargo pants to swords as she pleases. That one isn't as disturbing, to be honest. The only thing that sticks out to me is like... Uh, is, is the way that they were trying to portray this as that means you're a boy. Like, I know plenty of women. Like, my wife was a all-league soccer player that would just take bitches out. You know, being a little aggressive or being into cargo pants and swords or guns does not make you any less female. And, you know, look at Brad and Angelina. Like, Angelina Jolie's been divorced now three times. She She's... uh had sexual encounters with her brother publicly. She used to drink Billy Bob Thornton's blood, like on red carpets. Billy Bob Thornton is famously uh, scared of antiques. Like they're all nuts. And I'm not criticizing the, the fear of antiques. I don't know why I said that. You can be scared of antiques. I'm scared of weird shit. But uh, it's so weird. It's just, it's just so bad for kids. And they're divorced again. And then, you know, um, uh, Brad was married to Jennifer Aniston when that happened and she's now won't have children and everyone was rooting for her and it just doesn't happen for these people. You know, look at all these, these female icons. They don't have families. You know, Michelle Wolf had just got that. She's the new Chelsea Handler who famously is barren and alone. And, uh, you know, Oprah just sitting in these houses. Ellen, it's by, by you know, she's a lesbian, but she doesn't seem like she has very much uh, happiness in her life. Maybe she does. I'm not saying she doesn't. She probably does more than a lot of the, the straight ones because at least she's just getting some pussy or whatever. But And there's so many of them. And I'm not going to just keep doing this, but like this this thing, this this situation got me sad and, and, and wanting to attack Hollywood and what it's doing to people. Because I like this guy. This is a star of uh, Gotham. Plays a, a cop. It says, Gotham star... Donald Logue's missing trans daughter is now safely back home. And it's a picture of his son, this boy, this beautiful boy with the world uh, ahead of him. Uh, now his son doesn't look anything like that. That's why they don't use pictures. And they, they kept insisting uh, our daughter's missing. And, and the cops would be like, well, give us a description. And they kept sending these like child pictures. And, you know... The daughter is like 6'1 and looks very male and just kind of like, and like just, if you don't give the cops a, a, a description, they're not going to find your kid, you know, but at that point, I probably figured that the, the kid ran away. I was trying to get attention or something, but the fact the parents 
were virtue signaling over the safety of their own child. And yes, I'm judging. I am. It's, it's, it's wrong. And if, if no one else is, if no one else is saying, are we not, are we okay with this? Cause I'm not. And be damned all the people that say, oh, you have no heart. You have no spirit. You're not. I have heart. I get emails from kids or former abuse victims that say, thank you for standing up for us. Thank you for saying what I want to say. Thank you for having people that listen to you and you actually saying what's up. When, when people say, um, you know, when they make it out like you're not accepting the kid, you're not accepting his trans five-year-old. No, I'm not accepting the parents. And there always comes a time when, when the kid becomes old enough where now it's, it's just a tough run. You know, like even like uh, Dahmer and all these guys, uh, Charlie Manson, like they all had the shit beat out of them as kids. They None of them had dads, abusive ass moms, you know, system, like system, oppression, violence, you know, weird lives. And, and up until a certain point, you are rooting for this person. You're like, someone, please get little Charlie Manson away from that boarding house where they're raping him. But then once you get to an age, you're like, send it. That dude just killed a pregnant woman. Put him in the dirt. I have no sympathy for Charles Manson. None. He's like, once you get a certain point, you're now a threat. And I'm not saying these kids are going to grow up to be serial killers, but uh, they're unhinged. They're not do. They're, they, they won't be happy that the trans population has a 40% suicide rate. And these bastards... Blame it on society not accepting them. Auschwitz had a lower suicide rate. So the argument then is being trans in America right now, by the way, there is no oppression. You'll get your own Bravo show like that. And, uh, you know, Whitney Cummings will be your best friend immediately. So there isn't oppression. And also... Um, Auschwitz had real societal oppression. Like when you watched your wife and children march, uh, they take their, their, their shoes off and their, their heads are shaved and then they go get incinerated and you have to, um, to work yourself to death knowing you most likely will die and you, and you don't kill yourself. Pretty sure it's not about societal oppression. It's about, um, it's about being a little twisted up. And I know some trans people that know this, that know, they're like, yeah, I'm, I'm a little wacky, dude. Like I'm wacky. A lot of trans people are libertarians. They're not these LGBT collectivist drones. They're like, Hey man, I know, I know I'm, I'm wacky. So just don't judge me and I won't judge you. And you know, let's, let's get guns and beers and, uh, I'm, I'm going to be wearing a dress and, and call me a different name. That's typically what it is. It's not this whole, like, ha <laughs> dare you those people were raised by by just monsters like this was the guy that that originally got all the heat on me this is why i lost my agent because uh, look at this guy look at this 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 guy <laughs> look at him just grinning at the camera his wife half her face is missing and he's just like i'm better than you my five-year-old boy is a girl what a, he said he knew since, since she was two. Oh God. It's just so weird. And even like Warren Beatty, Warren Beatty and Annette Benning's daughter, trans, born a girl, came out as transgender last year. The 74 year old legendary Hollywood heartthrob remained mum on the subject. Speculation has it that the famous machismo actor is struggling with his daughter becoming a man. That's the thing. It's not always the parents pushing it either. It's if you don't give a shit about your kids and you care a lot more about uh, chasing pussy and getting gold trophies and getting in big fucking movies and, and crushing stadiums, your kids know it. Your kids know what your priorities are. Josh Wolf. God bless Josh Wolf. He's going to have a special come out soon. Man, I haven't watched it yet. He sent it to me to give him final notes on it because... I love that dude, man. Josh Wolf. Because he's a guy I can argue with. 
and uh, and we're boys. We 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 help each other with arguments. He said, "Your kids don't do what they say. You they don't do what you say. They do what you do." And it's so true. It's like they know what you value. I I, I was scheduled to have a dinner with Ron Paul tonight. And I love Ron Paul. And I did uh, this whole Libertarian convention yesterday. I got to hang out with Larry Sharp. And um, uh, this other dude that was like running for president. And it was a blast. I got to hang out with such interesting people. And I got to do this talk. And it was amazing. And and uh, I really wanted to meet Ron Paul and hang out with Ron Paul. And um, and so I was scheduled to like literally be at his dinner table and hang out and all that. And uh, I just, I wanted to get home. I was, and it wasn't being a bitch. It was literally just like, Wally was missing me and Amy needed back rubs because she's crazy pregnant and I just wanted to work on my yard and uh, it, it, it just felt like wrong. It felt wrong. It almost felt manipulative. It almost felt like I wanted power from him or something if, if I were to give up family time, like precious family time, just to like have dinner with a guy who was almost president. It was one thing if, if we did something together like Amy's a champ. Like I'm probably going to be in Australia for 12 days straight. And she's like, that's amazing, baby. I'm so proud of you. She's not holding me back at all. It's like truly fair. It's truly honest. And I'm not one of these guys that would give up career opportunities or like financial opportunities for my family to like, just stare at them and be like, I love you guys. But like, I, I'm not going to just hang out with a powerful guy and miss out with my family. If I was making something. And I love Ron Paul. Dude's got brass balls. And uh, I felt like I made the right decision. Unlike, I don't know, Cher. Uh, well, accepting her child's transition was not always easy. Cher has continually voiced support for her transgender son, Chess. That's the thing. They all act like they're these champions. Like, I'm a champion of trans. No, you're a bad fucking mom. Not Okay, it's one thing if your kid's just trans. Also obese. Your, your daughter is Ralphie May. For the people who don't understand it, I try to help them understand by saying, you know, I just love being a woman so much, but if I woke up tomorrow and I was a man, I, no, lady, you married a guy who beat the shit out of you because you wanted more stage time. And then uh, he hit a tree skiing, and I'm sure you weren't too bummed about it. And then you spent the next five decades figuring out outfits and light shows for your um, manic, depressant, homosexual audiences that will spend $1,000 a ticket just to watch you act like a diva instead of being home with your uh, child. So that's why your kid's Ralphie May now. Rest in peace, Ralphie. But don't act like you're brave and there's just some roll of the dice and all these celebrities just end up with kids that have drug overdoses. Not See, that, that wasn't fair. I, I know good parents have had kids with drug overdoses. Opioids are a fucking bitch. So is depression. I, that one. Okay. The rate of drug overdoses. Um, all these trans toddlers. All these um, uh, violent kids. Kids in jail. Kids that, that end up just real shitty. It's because their parents don't give a fuck about them. They want to orgy. They want people to, to, to want them and worship them and give them money and shit. And that's the whole fucking game. And there are some great individuals in, in LA. Great individuals. Talented individuals. I just named a couple by accident. Josh Wolf is one, you know. Kirk Fox, The Impractical Jokers, Nick Swartzen, Sandler. There's a ton of them. I'm not. I'm not naming a bunch. I don't, I'm just not thinking clearly right now. I haven't slept. But like, that's not the point. The point is the organism of Hollywood is sociopathic, not psychopathic, and um, it's not human. You can criticize it. It's not mean. It's not being a hater. It's saying it's diseased. Its values are off. It hates families. It hates love. Because when you are a disease monster, when you perceive anyone happy, anybody, like just smiling, you hate them, right? And so all the minions of Hollywood, they can't escape it. And a lot of them stay cool. I'm sure Chris Pratt's a great dude still. 
probably a great father, great to hang with. You could probably go bow hunting with him, legend, hilarious. But you can't tell me that shit didn't get into his heart. That's a that's a normal guy. That's a good guy. He's divorced with a little kid. That's not that common. Like it's common in certain communities that are like touching this infection. And Hollywood's one of them. DC's one of them. Uh, a lot of the university systems are one of them. My parents escaped it because my mom was a stay-at-home mom and my dad's 76. But I think a lot of teachers right now are facing some serious issues being next to disease monsters. And so I'm not the hater. I'm not the angry guy. I have compassion. And I want to call them out and hopefully rally the troops around and say, you know what? That isn't art. That's an institution. And there are artists still a part of it, but they don't praise art. They praise compliance. The, the, the women that called out Harvey Weinstein were not invited to the Oscars. Meryl Streep was still the, the belle of the ball. And, and she was the one who called him God on stage when she was uh, making women feel safe to go around him. And then you got Tommy Robinson. Love him or hate him. Doesn't matter. I don't care what you think about Tommy Robinson. It doesn't matter. He's just a dynamic alpha male. And he's made some mistakes in his life that he regrets. Like, when I was younger, I had some really bad ideas about the world. But now, ever since I met me mate, Boobles. Hello, Tommy. You know, he's just a dude. He wants to protect women and children. He sees a lot of bad shit going down that no one's reporting. So he was like... If they won't step up, I'll step up. You know what the, the British government did? They put him in jail. And you want to know what's the scariest part? It's not even that. Because governments, I don't trust. It's the people that are okay with it. It's the people going, well, he did violate probation. It's like, what? What? It's the people that comply. It's the people that say, well, I mean, Bill Clinton did a lot of good. Tomorrow I'm going to talk all about Al Gore. I've watched Inconvenient Truth, Inconvenient Truth on the Plane. That guy, I don't have the animosity I have for him that I have for these people. I think he's like a, a doofus with a lot of emotional problems. I think that whole movie was about the inconvenient truth that he lost an election. Because he'd be like, climate change is really bad, okay? But want to know what else is bad? The election. Look at some slow pictures of me looking out of a plane window. Just like George got to. I, I miss my, my parents on the farm. We had a tobacco farm. Look at my uh, uh, nice river. So anyway, the glaciers are melting. It's an inconvenient truth that everyone must face that... I really like my one chair that I was going to sit in as president. He's just a sad sack of shit. And uh, none of the predictions came true. I, I can't wait to break them down. Some people have emailed me that uh, other people have done a great job with it. And I watched some of them. And I don't really need to be meticulous with the breakdown of the lies in it or the things that didn't come true. But it's hilarious. The fact that it like won an Oscar and was 93% on Rotten Tomatoes. And it's, it's all wrong. And back then, the sophistry, like the, the rhetorical lies were so much worse because people weren't as savvy because they didn't have all this alternative uh, sources of information that they, he could literally just hold up a chart of just a red arrow going up and him being like, that's the temperature, right? So I was in Antarctica with my friend Gary and he pointed to part of the ice and said, look, Al, that's where you pass the Clean Air Act. You see how it looks a little different? I'm like, oh, no way. But anyway, that's bullshit. You can't tell where they passed the Clean Air Act from an Antarctica ice core that's 660,000 years old. Anyone who believes that, I, listen, in 2006... I get it. A lot of people were naive to, the, to these tricks. You know, they'd be like, hey, everybody, I'm a person with um, uh, uh, cre credentials. So I'm going to tell you some stuff that will be easily proven by opening up your window in five years. But you're not even going to question it then because we'll have something new to scare you with. All right. And if you, it's not this documentary will not end up on Netflix for some Weird reason. You ever notice that? You can't find these on Netflix. Like, this is classic Netflix. 
from 2006. I bet it would have been cheap as hell to buy. And it's all about lefty bullshit and global warming and all that. And uh, they don't have it on there. Because anyone who watches it, it's a comedy. He's like, and the polar bears, we've done scientific studies. And uh, by the way, Southern people, I'm not implying that, that the Southern accent sounds stupid. It doesn't. He sounds stupid. And I'm not doing a good enough job doing the South Parkian uh, bub- like they have them perfect. I just, I'm just doing a generic Southern accent. I'm not implying that having this accent makes you retarded Al Gore, but just, he really sounds like this kind of. And he's like, he's like, they've done studies on, on, on polar bears that, that drown. And there's been a lot more drownings ever since people have been turning on cars. Apparently like they got to rewrite the science books because of all the polar bear drownings and we won't have one polar bear left by the time this movie's over. He's so dumb that he didn't even put his predictions at 2050. Like Bernie Sanders is smart. He knows to say like by 2075, everybody's dicks will be because everyone's dead. But when he's like by 2013, Manhattan is underwater. Look at this graph. And it's just fake water going up. He's like, right. It's like, you like Florida? Well, look at Florida in, in just a few years. And it's just the, the, the tip of Florida is just becomes blue. And he's like, yeah. You like Bangladesh? Because it, it's, just, it's just complete nonsense. Uh, I mean, back then, I was still a liberal. And I was bummed that Al Gore didn't win. I can't believe we almost had him as a president. By the way... A lot of you right wing guys, I'm really sorry. Like I was wrong about a lot of shit. It was very humbling when 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 a lot of the uh, the things that I thought I knew for sure just crashed around me. Like I thought that 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 climate change was gospel, and if people didn't try to fight fossil fuels, they were literally uh, destroying the world. God, it was a parlor trick, and and I think that's one thing that motivates me. That's why I'll do a stream on a Sunday. I'm trying to respect the Sabbath. Don't get me wrong. You know, that's how you know you're not a slave. Because slaves work seven days a week. But uh, this, I, I need, I, these are things I have to talk about. Because I, I feel like so fucking tricked. Because they take what you want. This is another reason why I hate pedophiles. And I hate people that abuse children. Like, I don't think some of those people with trans kids are, are raping the kids. I think they're using them for social status, which is insane it's like because the kids want to please you they want to say dad that look dad that look at me look look how good i am and they'll take that and twist it and be like you want to know what dad dad likes dad dad likes if you're special like all the people that my elite friends like like okay like johnny over here has a gay son but he's like 30 and everyone's like looking at him like he's awesome so you know how you're two start saying you're a girl okay do that for papa and it's like but I'm not girl. It's like, but don't you kind of like the color pink? It's like, I like all the colors, dad, dad. It's like, but pink though, right? It's like, my dad, dad says pink, pink. And from there, you just start shaping them into nonsense. And that's what a lot of the, the, nah, I wasn't going to get political. I'm going to pull back from the politics. I am. This wasn't supposed to be a political discussion, but they, they, they make you want to save the earth and they personify it like it's your mother. And I love my mama. So it's like, your mom's in trouble. My mom's in trouble. They're burning down all the forests all the time. What? He even has a graph where it's Africa. It's like, this is from any night a satellite takes this picture and this is what they see. And it's like cartoonish flames in Africa. And he's like, right? And at that point, I literally was like, I kind of get the flat earth guys. I mean, they're wrong. But I, I, I truly do kind of understand, like, not believing fucking anybody. We're just being like, okay, you're all crazy. All right, I'm going to read the Super Chats and then enjoy your Sundays. Here's five bucks. Don't spend it all on one thing. Thanks for sticking to your guns. Hope YouTube doesn't screw you over. No, I feel okay about YouTube. I know that sounds naive, but that's why I'm also on Vimeo right now and I'm still doing my website. That's another plus of my wonderful and beautiful and, and intelligent wife that that has my best interest i was like youtube's back yay 
And she's like, baby, just remember, always do it on Vimeo too because you never know about YouTube. I'm like, but this time they say I'm good. And she's like, just always maintain Vimeo so you can keep people there, keep people going to your website. You know, that way when, uh, if it happens again, I don't look like the dumbass that didn't prepare because I, I didn't learn my lesson about human nature. You know, and I'm like, I really, really like you, Amy. So, yeah, thank you for the fiber. By the way, fibers, fibers rule the world. You just get enough people to just throw in a little. You can literally change shit. It's insane. Like, Unbearable News Network is awesome. So is uh, this tour we're doing. I don't know. Whatever. I'm not going to plug stuff. I'm going to keep it pure. It's Sunday. Good morning, Owen. Wife and I are looking forward to seeing you in Portland. Dude, it's going to be sick. Can't wait. Uh, Amy will be there. Nimmer will be there. It's going to be uh, a blast. And the family that owns the, the place is salt of the earth. I mean... Like, two of the sons came out to a show last time I was in Portland. They're like, Big Bear, come by the wood shop. And I'm just thinking it's just this little wood shop. Like, I thought they were selling little wood carvings. But they're so cool. I can get the vibe from them. And I'm like, I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe I'll stop by tomorrow. And they're like, yeah, we'll just do bear stuff. My mom always stops by with, like, uh, great sandwiches. And literally, it was like, my dream, my dream, my dream. You know, tight family, like, bear stuff. And so I went, and it was just this epic, just, I mean, wait till you see it. It's just beyond. It's like a half a city block in Portland, and the dad is this legend, you know, super family values guy, but just rock star, doesn't take shit. Uh, all his uh, employees are just loyal as hell. They came to two of the shows. His daughter, their sister, Hope, what, thank you again, Hope, made me, uh, I'll show you right now. Where is it? Oh, it might be in my kitchen. Where is it? It's like one of my favorite, most beautiful things. Oh, here it is. This was made by uh, by Hope. Hope Redman. Yeah, this is handmade. This is handmade. So once I, I got a, a little taste of their family, I was like, okay, I, I'm going to stay in touch with you guys. And then when all this venue stuff started happening, we we're like, what do you guys say we do a show there? And they're like, uh, yeah. And then, um, you know, Artling's like, bro, I, I got people with sound. I got people with uh, cameras. And he's like, let's, let's, let's shoot this baby. And I'm like, is this really happening? And then it just, everything started clicking. And it's going to be magic. Bellevue's going to be magic. That's It's a wicked sold out. And uh, Richland will also be magic. It won't. Uh, it won't be super packed, but I'm okay with that. It's a big venue, and I've always wanted to go to Eastern Washington, and the people coming are uh, just commit, like wicked committed awesome bears. All right. Hey, Owen, I'm sipping gin from my Unbearables flask and drinking ice water from my Bear Stein at the Indy 500. Cheers, buddy. That sounds awesome. Thanks for repping hard. Enjoy yourself. Owen, I have a problem. I really like this girl, but she's a lesbian, but I dig her personality, and she's super cute. Uh, just read that back and realize how hopeless it is. Is it worth trying to get with her? No, but I totally understand that. When I was in high school, I used to uh, dig lesbians and not in a creepy uh, guy who likes lesbian ways. It was because they were like funnier and they didn't seem to like freak out around guys and they were more assertive and they seemed to like just, I don't know, I related more to them because a lot of the women just acted or girls just acted like really stupid. And so I get where your head's at, but no, if she's a lesbian, you don't try and change somebody. There's so many women and you're so young. You sound, you sound young. Uh, there's no way you're, ah, there's, I don't know. I'm not going to assume. I'm not going to make any assume assumptions, but uh, no, don't go down. That, that road just sounds horrifying where it's like, so we're going to another Sarah McLaughlin concert. And she's like... Every day... Lesbians just want to drive their Subarus with their girl friends that they never have sex with. That they're obsessed with their four cats and blogging. And then comes a man who thinks that they can change her. And she's, a, she's willing to try, but then she gets a little resentful. And then she'll probably act out in weird ways. And maybe a lot of it has to do with her dad anyway. And 
That's a lot to handle when you're just a normal dude just looking to have a, a good life. Hi. I'm Owen Benjamin. And that $10 super chat was the best money you ever spent. Just be friends with her. And pursue a, a heterosexual girl that actually likes your penis and doesn't find it horrifying and disgusting. Please, adopt a dog. Because if not, I'll shoot them all in the fucking head. But have a great day. Oh, there's another one. But have a great day. You're the guy that switched my perspective on marriage. Charming Bear. Oh, good. Well, I hope I switch your uh, perspective on marrying a lesbian. <clears throat> Nama Bear. People are too invested in this social media crap basing their view of themselves on whether someone will interact to a comment. Don't they realize all they have to do is send a super chat? Guaranteed interaction. Well, yeah, and it, it eliminates people just trying to get off on, um, on being mean. And I can handle, like, funny mean, but that whole, like, I'm going to kill you with my gun. Please react, please react, please react. Trolls don't pay. And, uh, and I just think it's organized very great. And it also allows me to do this for a living. So it's a win, win, win. Uh, people are so wrapped up in being accepted by others. The pure truth is to be acceptable to God and yourself. Yes. Oh, and also the normal non-super chat is, is valuable. It's not like I'm saying you guys have to super chat. I mean, that's not exact at all what I was implying. Friendships are being made. Things are being debated. Some random troll is probably saying Jews over and over again. It's, it's an exciting area. And I was talking to one of the bears who came to uh, this weekend who was telling me that he works a lot and he's a family man and he works real hard and he doesn't get a, a chance sometimes to go. And he doesn't drink. He doesn't like going to bars. And he's just like young, healthy dad, good looking dude, funny. And he's like, it allows me to like hang. Like it, it's fun. It's, I, I have friends that are of high quality. They're intelligent. They're cool people. And he's just like, thank you for that. And I'm like, bro. I get the same thing. Like, we've really stumbled on something special. All right. Uh, Benjamin, thank you, buddy. Robert Atkinson, my argument. Monogamy was made by church government to make families small. If people had multiple partners, they could protect themselves better. If one out of two loses their job, crisis. One out of six loses their job, manageable issue. I totally disagree, buddy. Even though you just gave me a very nice super chat, but I would be um, not doing any of us a favor if I just agreed with people who gave me money. Uh, that I think is the exact opposite. I think the, uh, the government, uh, wants you to not be married because you're way easier to control and you will absolutely have way less kids. I, uh, and also you, you it's, it's a horrible structure to raise your kids. Let, let's say one guy can have 40 wives, right? Cause you're not going to have a woman with 10 husbands. It's not really in there. Um, read, read female fantasy novels. None of them are like. And then eight more guys joined. It really isn't. I mean, maybe some chicks in weird places in their life that are a little wacky. But that's not in the female DNA, isn't like, you know, they may have the Edward uh, Jacob thing. But in reality, they want their man to be both. Just impossible and slightly infuriating. But they're really not into just random cock. Uh, or even having multiple long-term relationships, typically. You know, unless uh, they're a lesbian, like I just talked our fortunate bear out of uh, getting into. But anyway, let's say you have one man who has 10 wives. And then you have another man who has five wives. And another man can, is really rich, so he can afford 40 wives. You want to know what that does? All those male females are on 50-50 in the population. So now you have 40, 10, 5, you know, what I just listed, 55 men, well, minus the three. So 50. Um, 52 men will not have a partner because all those women have been sucked up by the rich men. So you, you, you carry that algorithm out. You have tons of single men with no family and no partner and nothing to uh, get them to focus. So what do you get? <coughs> Islam. <coughs> you get a lot of dudes with nothing to lose. You get a wicked unstable population and it, that's real bad. I'm not even talking about the... Uh, the moral or ethical or religious aspect of it. And when you say the church, I do not know what you mean, my man, because uh, 
you know, like the Catholics, the priest wasn't allowed to ever marry, but that was more about land acquisition. You know, I think that what you're trying to do is justify uh, what you want, you know, or not. I'm not going to, I'm not going to assume that people assume weird stuff in me. I'm not going to assume that in you, but I just don't see that as the proper way. I'm okay. It, it's, it's hard enough to be a hardworking man and give a lot of attention to your wife and one kid. Like I'm, I'm doing a decent job at it right now. Could be better, but I try hard. Now we're already talking about two kids. Once you have that second kid, now you're splitting time. You know, you got to do stuff together. You don't want to play favorites, but you know, one's a screaming baby and the other's awesome Walter. I got to figure that one out. Now you have three kids, even a little harder. Okay, now you have another woman with a kid. And then another woman with two kids. Those kids don't get a dad. I mean, say whatever you want. Think that you might have a, a, a big picnic once a weekend and every kid's going to be like, Daddy, because if you breed like a rabbit, your kids are rabbits. They're not these grizzly bears. You know? Like, look at any animal that's, that's like really cool. Like elephants or like really sweet animals. They all have parents that kind of stick around. Like those like one and done rabbit people are literally just like, they're, they're just, they're, they're, they're shit. There, there's no, there's nothing there. I'm not saying to like kill them or anything. Not at all. But I'm just saying it's a different breed. And I'm also not saying if you didn't have a dad, you're a rabbit. These are things I'm not saying. But I'm just saying to really have a balanced upbringing, you need a, because a lot of times like my, my wife had a, uh, a single mom for a few years because her <clears throat> Mexican dad bailed. But she had awesome grandparents and great aunts and uncles and an awesome brother. Well, no, the brother came from the, the white, the new white dad that stuck around like whites do. That's why we have privilege. It isn't our skin. It's our uh, ability to commit to one woman. <laughs> but uh, she ended up fine because she had Jack, Grandpa Jack. She had a great male role model in life. She had great family. She had a community. She, she, it takes a village to raise a child. And if you have no men in your life, you have no positive male role model, I mean, you're just, you're just a lesbian trying to get a bear to marry you. Ian. Oh, and thanks for all your work. Have you ever interacted with the Hodge twins? Also recurring guests on Crowder. That would be a fun collaboration. I haven't. I've seen them because obviously I'm, I'm a big Crowder guy. But uh, no, I'd love to talk, I'd love to, talk to anybody. Hi, Owen. Can I be verified as rock bear? My fiance and I are planning a small, simple wedding. We're gay and our families are way cool. Are you lesbians? Because stay away from the bear. Uh, but they keep asking for details. How did you plan yours? Uh, ours was just our, our families. We didn't have any friends. And we did that because we didn't know. Like, it, it would never end. Like, I don't know how to end the friend line. Cause we both had like a decent, a good amount of close friends, but like a ton of pretty good friends and every plate was just more and more and more cash. And, uh, as a wedding piano player, I would always see that the people that spent just uh, way too much money on a wedding, a lot of times they get either divorced or they'd look miserable. Like if it's like you wanted the $10,000 ice swine, you fucking, I don't know why I'm here, you know? But then when you just see like a nice simple wedding with, uh, you know, your favorite, favorite aunts and uncles and your close friends and it's just intimate and funny and joyous and that's the way to do it. So what's the exact, oh yeah, welcome Rock Bear. All right, is it after Rock Hudson? If you're a gay dude, is it Rock Hudson? You can be honest. Uh, my fiance and I are planning a small simple wedding. We're gay and our families are way cool, but they keep asking for details. How did you plan yours? Well, if your families are way cool, just be like, yeah, let's just keep it the families. And uh, tell them to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Innocence is now hated by society. That's why they aren't outraged by pedophiles. Exactly. When you're evil, good hurts. And uh, they prey on it. You know, they have to control good. And kids are good. You know, they can be little dicks, but it's not because they're evil. I mean, humans, you know, we, we have... I'm not going to philosophize. I'm just going to read these. I'm already done an hour and a half. Uh, but <coughs> good point now, bear. Robert's back. He's the polygamy guy. We demand loyalty from our partner enforced by church and government. If your wife were to die, you'd never love again. 
If you found a woman that made you as happy as your wife does, you have the right to keep you from or vice versa? No, that's a way different scenario, by the way. Like one of my coolest friends, Joe, who directs all my stuff now, his mother died when he was two and his father was uh, absolutely destroyed. And he's from a very Christian family, very good family, huge family. And they were young. His dad loved his mother deeply and she died of cancer when he was two. When he was telling me the story, I was, I didn't cry because we're on a road trip with bros, but I like literally almost just started sobbing. Like thinking about losing your wife when your child is two, like someone you love and you're, you just started a, a family together. And so he didn't date or see anyone for years. And then he met another woman and they started a family and they have a great family and they're still married and they're having a great time. But like, that's a way, way different scenario than what you proposed earlier. And it, it's not about enforcement by church or government. And so would I marry again? No. I mean, I can't say that though. But I highly doubt it, guys. I'm a, I don't know, I just, is it weird to say I can't even fathom that? But again, people that I know that have been just head over heels in love for years and years and someone dies and years later they, they uh, remarry and they have a great life. So it happens, but it's definitely not something that I want to uh, think about, but it's good to think about values and stuff, but that isn't like what you asked about earlier. I think you're trying to weasel something there. BMX bear, some Sunday fun day salmon and honey money for the big bear. <laughs> dude, that's awesome. Thanks for always keeping it real, rugged and raw. Much love from the Hoosier State. Hell yeah, dude. You're going to be on Tri Tripoli's podcast or is he scared? No, Tripoli's great. I've known Tripoli forever. He's also, people always say me and Tripoli talk similar, but that's just because uh, we're both from a similar part of central New York. He's from uh, Cortland. And I'm from Oswego. And so that's why we're like, hey, yeah, man. It's like wicked great. I'm wicked scared of the government, bro. I'm telling you, man. I'm Sam Tripoli, bro. Dude. That was so... Dude, I'm... Bro, right? I'm telling you, man. I'm Sam Tripoli. I'm, I'm Armenian. Right? Dude. They're coming for us, man. It's wicked crazy. No, Sam's straight up, dude. Sam's great. In the beginning, God made Adam and Eve, one mate for one mate. Once the apple was eaten, lust became the corrupter. Go back to basics, sticks to the original rules. People need to remember the rules. They do. Someone said something great. It's, if you break the original rules, you just get a million little rules. It's like death by a thousand cuts. And I'm, I'm not telling you how to live your life. And I'll still be your friend if you are, uh, do whatever you want, pretty much, unless you're like a bad person. But, uh... I'm, I'm literally go on these rants, hopefully to tell people like what they could potentially have. And a lot of other people will agree. It's, it's just true. You know, some people have shit marriages. I can't speak on that. I could have, I could have been in a shit marriage if I had, you know, gotten a girl, girlfriend pregnant back in the day and got married and we weren't right for each other. There's a good chance that I'd be one of those guys. It's like, Man, I just want to go to the strip club and have someone look at my dick. I don't know. I can't speak on that. All I know is if you do it right and honest, it's really great. And I think that there's forces trying to keep people from having that now, which is nuts. Thank you for telling the truth about trans children. Oh, anytime. I can't not. Hey, Owen, never give up into the Marxists. You Shapiro and Peterson are my heroes. Well, cheers, Jeff. Well, we're also just boys. Me and you are just boys. I was telling that to one of the Bears this weekend where they were like, Oh, who, someone I was podcasting with, I think. And they're like, dude, I, I listen to all your stuff and it's just so surreal to be able to talk to you. I'm like, this is what I've experienced because I've also listened to people for hundreds of hours and then done a podcast with them that I've like really, really looked up to. One of the reasons you like listening to me is because we relate. Podcast fans are not like movie star fans. Movie star fans a lot of times just want to be close to power or close to... Um, Someone that, that is, has status and they have nothing in common and it's really creepy and weird. If you like just sit and listen to someone talk for like hours and then you like interact with other people that like listening to someone talk for hours and you get along, there's a real good chance you can just be like friends with that guy because 
you relate to that person. And that's one reason why I love this medium. Because when I meet you guys at shows and stuff, it isn't that creepy like, you're famous. Can I smell your hair? Can I follow you around? It's not like that. It's literally like, hey man, I, I respect what you do. And within five minutes, you guys are busting my balls. We're just chatting. Some of you guys are super quiet. Some of you guys are super talkative. It doesn't matter because the reason you're here is because we agree on a lot of shit. It's almost like a dating app for fucking friendships. Ha. <laughs> Uh, Robbie, hey Owen, any thoughts on Star Wars fan boycotts and the disappointing box office numbers for Solo the movie? Well, I did a thing where I called it Soy Low. Yeah, it looks awful. It looks like it, it got infected by soy. I mean, watch the movie if you want to watch the movie, but oh, let me just check the bear phone real fast. Oh, I didn't even turn on the bear phone yet. But uh, yeah, they were like talking about Lando's sexuality and shit. It, it's just, it's not the hero's journey anymore. It's the victim squabble. You know, and now, like, any woman is, like, gets the force in, like, 10 seconds and just beats everyone up and then has to be saved and then beats everyone up again. It's just all nonsense. Back in the day, it was the hero's fucking journey. And that's what people relate to, because we're all lobsters. Oh, let me check the bear phone. Big Bear, you sang my hubby happy birthday to him on Beers and Bears. Can you verify him as Taz Bear? Thanks, Big Bear. Welcome, Taz Bear. Uh, happy birthday also new subscriber love everything you've been streaming and posting thanks dude keep that shit up anytime Mike Mike Hunt is that your real name because that's hilarious can I get a shout out to my amazing wife Dana Tough Bear shout out Dana Tough Bear you're awesome and I love all the bears hashtag mod me too wrench life haha <laughs> alright I can mod you bro but uh, don't abuse it don't don't uh, censor everyone that, that criticizes Jews only if they're like you can tell when someone's like a bot right? You guys can tell. If someone's like, what's up with the Fed? Jews are a little sneaky. You don't just censor them. Or if someone's like, man, black people act kind of weird when I'm around. Only cut off people that are like, coward admit that they should be burned. You, know, you can tell when someone's just fucking nuts. Because I don't mind dissent. As long as it doesn't just derail the fucking chat. Where it's just one dude just over and over again. Just saying something insane. Then ice him. But I just made you a mod. Congratulations. If you, if you abuse it, I will. I will remove it. ARRTs. They, they kept cutting two, two men in... What is this? What is this? Oh, that was a long one. A few nights ago, the wife and I were looking for something to watch and unwind having put the children to bed. I came upon a show called Explained. The description read like the show how it's made. <laughs> I know where this is going. Oh man, it was hysterically comical. The first episode was called Monogamy Explained. It was an hour of shitting on monogamy. They kept cutting to two men in particular. One identified as Chunk from the Goonies. That one was the woman, of course. And the other one looked like it had little choice in anything. <laughs> so my wife and I, this is hilarious, are just tearing this insanity to shreds. The next episode loads and that's when I see it's a Vox production. Makes total sense now. I couldn't help but wonder... How many people clicked on this shit and then watched the entire series? Misinformation doesn't even begin to uh, describe it. And now the Obamas are signing on to Netflix. Stellar. I could have saved the 10 bucks a month. The moral of the story is I should be more alert to beers and bear hangs. Good morning. Uh, they, cut, they kept cutting to two men in particular. Dude, that's hilarious. I was just trying to uh, watch something on Netflix and I was looking at all the originals. And it's, it's all, except for like Ozark's, Mind of a Killer or something like that. There's like Mind Hunter or something like that. Someone recommended that. There's a few good shows. Me and Amy like something else recently too. But it literally is just crazy agenda, crazy agenda, crazy agenda. It's literally like Bill Nye explains why you shouldn't trust your eyes and hands. Ooh. The most expensive thing in the world is free. I'll tell you that right now. That So thanks for everybody who signs up for Patreon. Patreon.com slash WDTL. Hugepianist.com slash subscribe or super chat or just buy any shit or anything. Or not. Just hitting the like button or sharing is, is another form of currency. But just, just trust me when people are like, it's free. It's only $10 a month for all the movies and TV in the world. It's not free. It means that eventually they'll just take it all. They'll get a monopoly and uh, 
get the government on board. And then as long as they feed the government's bullshit, the government will allow them to uh, beat everyone in competition through regulation. And it's a propaganda wing. Uh, good luck. N uh, Neil, what's his name? He's a great children's story writer. Gaiman wrote a short story about aliens who, um, who took over Earth. And what they kept doing is, is coming down and over giving way too much money for everyone's house. They were like, as human beings. And like, let's say your house is worth a hundred grand. They would give you like 500 grand and people would sell it and be like, I can't believe it. And then some, one of their friends would be like, the same thing happened to me. I just sold my house for 500 grand. What are we going to do? And it just kept happening until everyone's house was gone and money didn't mean anything. And they were all gone. Because then everyone's house was that. And then they're like, well, I have to buy another house. And by that time, it was 800 grand, a million, two million. And it was, it was a great way to, uh, to kind of show that insanity. Oh, this is from Lazy Eye Bear. Tried the app. Figured I had to type something and send it, so I did. Couldn't tell if I did anything or not. Oh, what, what is this? Big Bear. I get emails telling me you posted something, and it just takes me to a page with a lock and a box to enter a secret code. How do I get in? I don't even know. <coughs> I don't know what that is. I'll look into it. I'll ask Amy. Ed, wishing you a happy birthday. Thanks for all you do. Have a blessed day with your family. I got a lot of bear, uh, bear phone messages that I will not be able to get to, which is a bummer. But uh, thanks for covering. Oh, I oh, there's another Netflix thing. Um, since you asked, went dark when you were talking about Gay Lando. No way. Just saying, you'd probably like a compound at Bear Lake between Idaho and Utah. I'd get rid of Netflix, Netflix, but I got the account from a roommate who got it from a roommate who got it from their parents, who got it from an alien. Uh, thanks for covering the Tommy Robinson imprisonment yesterday. Can't wait to see clips of you in Omaha Conference. Yeah, we recorded it, so I will be putting those up. I'll just do one more bear phone, and then I'll get more of these. Oh, it's about founding fathers. Our founding, our founding fathers... Slaves lived as well as anyone can under communism. All right, no one's going to top that. That's hilarious. It's true. All right, so uh, <coughs> Networking Bear, you, you have a wrench now. You are so vital in the fight for free speech. Can you give a shout out to my fiance, Lawrence? She's gorgeous, but identifies as a cat, not a bear. Shrug. Uh, shout out to Lawrence. Cats are, are needed in this world. Not as much as bears, obviously, but it's, we're good to have you around. You know. <sighs> have you watched Cobra Kai yet? I have not. I will. I registered arch archetype obsessed bear. Awesome. More crazy emails to come. Oh, hell yeah. I like your crazy emails, even though I can't read all of them, obviously. But looking for some entertainment? I'm watching Sharps Rifles on YouTube. UK show about the Napoleonic Wars. Men being men unashamed. Oh, also turns out Napoleon, not really short. That was propaganda. I'm working on a bit now about how the real division with people isn't race. It's a uh, height between men. I'm like, I don't know how a five niner hangs out with a five seven or a uh, Yogi bear did one did first open mic guitar at black bear pub wore unbearable shirt and had my bear stein for sips between songs. Lots of folks want that shirt. Hell yeah, dude. Trucker bear. Your Al Gore impression sounds suspiciously like Mr. Mackey. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I haven't worked on it before. So I, uh, I just kind of riffed on, on dopey, like dopey Tennessee, but I don't think I really got Tennessee properly. John, thanks. Oh, thank you. Fave quote from you is hurt people hurt people. Classic and true. Magster Bear. Oh, thank you. Big Bear, how about a Johnny Cash parody? A boy named Soy. That's funny. Can I be verified as Cole County Bear? And shout out to Shark Attack Bear. Yeah, shout out and welcome. Um, yeah, I don't think I have time to get to that today, but that's a funny one. A boy named Soy. Just uh, anything but soy. I could I would have drank in my own piss. A boy. Uh, we'll figure it out. Hey, Big Bear, just found out I have skin cancer. Oh, Brewing Bear, I'm sorry to hear that. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help, obviously. Definitely want more details on that. Uh, it sucks, buddy. Oof. It's beatable. That's, that's one of the more beatable ones. So, I mean, you're definitely going to beat it, but it's not like stage eight pancreas, but... We'll beat it together. We'll get you a sombrero. We'll cut it out. We'll, we'll just, we'll hang out. Man, that sucks, dude. So you got your boy on your arm and your shoulders in that pick. Ah, it's fucking brutal. I thought I was dying the other day and I found out why. Remember when I didn't, uh, 
my, my uh, birthday, I didn't do anything. It's because when I burned all the yard waste, I think I burned a bunch of poisonous plants. And I think my lungs were literally constricting. I mean, it's nothing like skin cancer, but I desperately was trying to relate. So I didn't just, you know, sound wicked, sad. Mike, middle and last name I. My parents are hilarious. Your name's Mike Hunt. Wow. Speaking of podcasts, please plug mine, The Plain Podcast on SoundCloud. At The Plain Podcast. That's P- that's The Plain, P-L-A-I-N. Not like the flying plane. Also on Facebook and Twitter, hashtag Joy Not Soy. I love the hashtag, buddy. So that's At The Plain Podcast. Check them out. Support bears. Ziggy Shrug. Mr. Benjamin, can I be verified as homeschool bear, please? Hell yeah, because I'm in. I homeschooled both my living uh, my living kids K through 12, and if I can help with homeschooling info, just let me know. Thank you for your honesty, integrity, and vision. Oh, I love it. Any info anyone wants to send me, I'm all about. It. I've been listening to a few uh, Malinus from like 2012 when he was uh, in, talking to this one woman about homeschooling that I found very interesting. Man, if you listen to some of his old stuff, he was ahead of his time on a lot of stuff. CNN, you go back three weeks it's as if it's a joke. It's it's like it's like uh, watching watching the documentary uh, and then giving you truth. It's a laugh riot. It's really like, man, I I went outside today and my shoes melted to the ground, and I know it's because of because of oil and because of George Bush. I know I won. I'm so sad. Mr. Benjamin, can I be verified? Oh, I just read that. Oh, last one. Logged, logged Netflix and Michelle Wolf has a new show, WTF. Oh, yeah, buddy. That's, uh, that's what they do with cults. It's about compliance. You go up there and you just you shred Trump. And then here's a show. And um, one of our dearest bears, Kiwi Bear, had a uh, tragedy in the family. So if I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to help any way I can. She she designed the the art to both of my last two specials. She's an absolutely wonderful human being, and she's gone through some stuff. Um, so I don't know if you could just give her some love. She she loves love. She's a sweetie, and uh, it's always really really sad when something bad happens to good people. So uh, yeah, God bless Kiwi Bear. Pray for Kiwi Bear. Uh, yeah. All right. Anything else anyone wants to talk about? I'm um, I'm in the normal chat. I don't want to miss anybody, but I am going to go hang out with my family. No, I had a late night. Feel like late stage Elvis today. Don't laugh. Kiwi. Yeah. Kiwi is uh loon creative on IG. Yeah. Yeah, she is. And uh, I think uh, PayPal dot me slash. I don't want to get it wrong because she's an artist. She always, you know, any support anyone can give her in any way. Because uh, tragedy is expensive. I tried to help her out a little. It's kind of weird, though. I don't know what to do in those situations. I'm like, here, have some money. Because I don't know how to do emotions. Sometimes. Because you're going through something that is unfathomably hard. So, I know things can be expensive. Oh, am I reading PayPal? Yeah, I'll do that right now. I don't, I don't want to miss you guys. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, PayPal... There we go. Because I do appreciate that. I appreciate the paypal.me slash feed the bear. Uh, they came through hard when YouTube tried to put a penis in my ass. So I like to stick with, with people who stick with me. And the people who don't stick with me, I, I, I fucking kill. All right. I can't guarantee I get to all of them, guys. I, 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 I do have to go. I, was, I swear to God, I was going to do like 45 minutes. Of course, I do two hours. But it's because I, I really love it. Oh, and I got a bunch over uh, the last couple days, some good notes. And I will get to those. And I'll verify the people that do it when we're not doing uh, streams. Because a lot of you guys are like, Big Bear, here's some honey. I'm working. But can I be, you know. So I'll hit, I'll hit those up because I, I really appreciate those. Devin, hey, Owen, finally got around to checking out the Unbearables app. That's unbearablesapp.com. Register your bear names. Very cool people in there. Oh yeah, no trolls. Because trolls don't how the fuck do they know about it? Like the 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 crazy robot trolls that are always on Twitter and Instagram and stuff being like, You are evil and the devil. I once loved you and now I hate you. Zero followers and his name is 
6'9K47. Like, those aren't real people. I'm having Kevin uh, Hickerson on Tuesday, my physics buddy, who's going to help explain to me bots and, like, how they operate and how we can fight them. But, uh... <coughs> yeah, the Unbearables app is just bears. It's, like, really kind and great. All right, if you're ever... In, uh, if you're ever... Need help in PA? I've got your back, bud. Wander Bear. Oh, I love you, buddy. Also, if anyone wants to help film in, uh, or do sound in Bellevue, I, I definitely want to record it. So let me know. Or Portland or any of this stuff. I, I'll need help. Uh, I'll need some bears to help out if anyone's interested. Email unbearablecomedy at gmail. Or is it unbearables? Unbearable comedy, I think. That's still left. She'll, she'll organize it for, for me because I'm insane. Just a little say hi. Appreciate your love to you, Amy and the boys. Thank you very much. Taylor. Hey, Owen, my name's Taylor. I saw that you were possibly going to tour Australia later this year. I assume you're going to Perth, Western Australia. If you are, I just wanted to put it out there that I'm a videographer and I can film and take photos for you. All right, awesome. I got your info. I'll hit you up, dude, for real. Big Bear. <laughs> just want to set the record straight from yesterday on Instagram. Your picture about the normalizing of pedophilia on the kids. New movie, I was in no way trying to compare being drunk to child rape. All right, well, this is this is probably a really good one, but uh, it's pretty long, and I, we don't have to get too into it. I'm sure he's a fucking fine fellow. P, like, a printed word can make people just have bickering arguments. This is from Lassie. Bombard's body language has been banned on YouTube. Should be a big story. Bombardsbodylanguage.com. What does that even mean? That sounds... And I don't know who Bombard is or, or how you could banned body language. What is he just real pelvisy? Hey, anyone, can I be verified as Soundy Bear? Welcome, Soundy Bear. Go to the app, register. I love this show and would love to help support what you do. I've done sound for film TV for 10 years in LA for five, now back home in Denver. Ooh, when I when I perform in Denver, I'm going to need some sound, buddy. All I need is a plane ticket. And I'd love to make your show sound awesome. Ooh, that sounds very intriguing. Um, Well, when I moved to Washington, I'm setting up a whole... Um, Studio. That's one of the things I'm looking for is a detached garage that I can like revamp to make sick. So I'll definitely need help with that. Richard. Hey, Big Bear, I thought I'd gather some notes on an inconvenient truth for you, but come to find out his arguments are pretty compelling. I <laughs> This better be a joke. I immediately started wondering if I've been wrong about everything. So I ran to the store and got several gallons of soy milk and now I'm growing tits. I was wondering if you were serious about picking it apart because my girlfriend liked me a lot more when I could get my dick hard. Love you. Sincerely, Stinky Bear. That was great, buddy. That that made me laugh. Obviously, I had to keep a straight face to keep the funny because it, it was a straight man delivery. Good morning. This is from Cheston. Just wanted to pop in and say hi to you and the Bears. I greatly respect your work ethic. Not many people are willing to work for what they want anymore. Anyway, have a great day, Owen and Bear family. I have to get back to painting my life away. Love it, buddy. Paint, paint, paint. Um, I was going to paint my house, but Amy didn't think I was, I'd be good at it. And she believes in me because I, I, I'm not always good at attention to detail when it comes to paint. Like I've, I fucked up some rooms, like I'll paint, I'll like tape and shit. And then like halfway through, I'll just be like, yeah, fuck it. And everyone's like, what? Oh, and did you get the shekels that I sent you? you? USPS says they were delivered. I wouldn't want the elders of Zion to be disappointed. Hysterical. And no, I'm going to the... Uh, post office tomorrow. I promise I've been late, but the fact you guys send me stuff is insanely awesome. I've just been wicked focused, but you're the fucking best. And thank you for finally paying me the shekels for making fun of uh, Muslims because apparently I am owed them from Jews. That's what some of the comments say on YouTube. Neil, wonder if Amy could get some parking tips from the venue folks in Portland and email to those that will be attending would be great if she could do that. That's a great idea because parking sucks in Portland. Not sure what the parking situation will be there. Thanks, Neil, Tranny Bear. Yeah, we'll get on that. That's a great call. I'm glad that you said that because parking in Portland does suck because everyone's got their fucking giant tricycle. All right, guys, that's going to that's gonna be it for me. I'm going to pop in and say bye to everybody. We need to take back Washington. I know Washington is one of those states that's on the verge. That's why it was one of the reasons I kind of want to live there. I like a good fight, but I also don't like to live in just horror like Burlington or fucking, um, I don't know. Jews, this is from Delev. Jews owe all the shekels to the Muslims. We also owe them TNT. Nice one, Delev. 
Bye, Owen. Love you and Amy. Oh, thank you. Bye, everybody. Have a great day. Uh, I hope my my argument against Hollywood was compelling because I really don't want to sound like a hater or some guy that is just like, hey, fuck all those people with all the fancy stuff. It really is fucked up out there. And uh, I'm just trying to do my part and not just complaining, not just saying what is wrong with the world, but but make our own stuff, which we are doing. And it's a group effort and you're all crushing as well. So we make stuff. We do Unbearable News Network. We do uh, videos. We encourage each other. We do podcasts. We, we tour uh, specials. And it's only going to grow, I promise you guys. You got to trust me on this because it, it keeps growing. And the more people that can figure out what they want to do and what empowers them, like based on what they're passionate about, the more we can just make comedy that beats the fucking stupid Netflix shit about like, here's the reality about monogamy. It's a buzzkill if you're awful. All right. Much love, everybody. And and shout out Kiwi Bear if you can. Just give her some love because she's going through uh, some real hard stuff right now. And she's a, a really a really sweet girl and um, a true artist. So, And tragedy can hit any of us at any time and just hug those you love. And uh, don't drink the soy or your dick and your balls will fall off of your body.